Hello and welcome to the second episode in the series Understanding the Freedom of Information Act brought to you by the Right to Know R2K Nigeria. The passage of the Freedom of Information Act is a victory for democracy, transparency, justice and development. As you now know from the previous episode of this series, the passage of this law was a silent revolution as it equips Nigerians with vital tools to uncover facts, fight corruption and hold officials and institutions accountable. But it requires on your part, having fought a long battle, to institutionalize transparency and accountability as pillars of governance in Nigeria. And I'll emphasize transparency and accountability. And so the main premise behind freedom of information is that people have a right to know about the activities of public authorities. Yes. Now to facilitate this, there are poignant principles guiding access to information legislations which operationalize this right. And that includes the Freedom of Information Act. Now, these are to ensure that access to information legislations fully achieve their purpose in operationalizing the right to information, thereby enabling their best use to empower you as a citizen. The first principle of maximum disclosure establishes a presumption that all information held by public bodies should be subject to disclosure. This principle encapsulates the basic rationale underlying the very concept of freedom of information. Public bodies should be under an obligation to publish key information, mandatory, not discretional. Freedom of information implies not only that the public bodies accede to requests for information, but also that they publish and disseminate widely documents of significant public interest, subject only to reasonable limits based on resources and capacity. Now, in addition to making information accessible, it is the duty of public authorities to keep the public informed about their rights and about the operations of those in authority. Access to information regime stipulates only a strict and narrow scope of information that may be restricted from disclosure. All information from public bodies should be disclosed unless the public body can show that the information falls within the scope of the limited regime of exceptions as stated by the law. The exemptions, much of which are extensively discussed in episode 7, are not to check valuable information but to create a balance between the right to access government held information and the need to protect the interests of the government and the people. That's right. Public officers are duty-bound to assist anyone requesting information in processing requests. Now, in furtherance of this, an access to information regime should ensure that all requisite processes are put in place to facilitate this access to information. Applicants should be guided through the process, making it rapid and fair for them. Where necessary, provision should be made to ensure full access for certain groups, for example, for those who cannot read or write, literacy challenged people, those who do not speak the language of record, or for those who suffer from disabilities. The next principle states that information should be given free of charge. As much as this is possible, where a fee is charged, it should be reasonable and not exceed the actual cost of reproduction. By principle seven, Meetings of public bodies should be open to the public because access to official information can also improve public confidence and trust if government and public sector bodies are open and transparent. See the correlation between trust, openness and transparency? Now, the eighth principle states that all laws which are inconsistent with freedom of information and with maximum disclosure should be amended or repealed, including secrecy laws. Disclosure must remain the norm Secrecy is the exception. And finally, blowing the whistle is more formally known as making a disclosure in the public interest. So it is important you can do so know you are protected from being victimized as a result of what you have uncovered and made public. Now that the FYI Act is getting clear, but before you ask about how to access information from a public institution, there is an interesting dimension that this beautiful law introduces in defining what a public institution is. Watch episode 3 for the answers. <laughs>